This here is a simple texture, and this is an animated texture. An animated texture is a texture that moves. To turn a simple texture into an animated texture, we need a series of frames. Our animated texture will now quickly switch between these frames to give the illusion that it's moving. Animated textures are a staple in the video game industry, from dust, explosions, flames, sparks, any sort of effects, 2D characters, and even things like tank treads and conveyor belts. Now currently if you are using the Blender Game Engine and you look under the UV Image Editor, you will see a Game Properties section with what appears to be a method of setting up animated textures. However, this feature has a few problems. First of all, it reads the frames backwards and upside down, starting from the bottom left corner and scanning all the way to the top right. The problem is that almost every animated texture is generated top left to bottom right. So for every animated texture that you do want to use, you're going to have to manually rebuild from scratch. Secondly, it does not support instancing. Basically, if I spawn in lots of different explosions, I want my explosions to play their animation at different times, depending on when they were spawned. However, the default method does not allow for this, so if you spawn in 10 explosions, they all play at the same time, regardless of what time you spawn them in. Thirdly, animated textures do not start at the actual starting frame. If you play the animation and exit, the animation will continue where it left off when you exited the game. This makes timing unpredictable and can result in broken animations. Lastly, there is no support for scrolling textures or any sort of event-based character animations. Basically, if you want to do anything involving animated textures, you need to know Python. And that's what this add-on is going to change. The Blender Game Engine Sprite add-on is a new way of going about animated textures, replacing the old broken version as it is right now with a completely new and powerful system. This add-on includes scrolling textures, easy camera alignment, UV animation, event-based animation with priority, and instance versions of UV and event-based animation. And the best part of it all is, you don't need to know a single piece of code to use it. Now you can turn this boring looking texture like this into an awesome animated texture like this, simply with the click of a button. So with this add-on comes an instruction menu, a demo file as you can see here, and links to helpful tutorials to help you get started. So if you think you'd be interested, there's a link down in the description below, but for the rest of this video, I'm going to be going over all the different aspects of how to use it. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up Blender if I don't already have it open. Then we'll go over here and we'll go to File, User Preferences, then go to Game Engine under our Add-ons tab. And then here we want to make sure that we have Game Engine Sprites. Make sure that this checkbox is checked and then click Refresh and Save User Settings. If you do not see this option, then check the Instruction Manual. It will show you how to install it. Then what we're going to do is close that here we're going to change it to Blender Game Engine, over here GeoSL, and then we're going to go over here to the Materials tab. Then I'm going to get rid of my cube, X and Delete, Shift A, and add myself in a plane. Now to be clear, the add-on works on any sort of shape that you want to use, but for the purpose of this tutorial, just to keep it simple, I'll just be using a plane. So here what I'm going to do is, first of all, we're going to go over here to Texture View, and then I'm going to add myself a new material. Here I'm just going to leave all the default settings, then we'll go over here, add ourselves in a texture, make sure it's UV. So here I have a texture that I painted. So now you've got the texture open, we can make a new window, and in here we'll choose UV Image Editor. In our editor, we're going to go down here and choose our image. Now the default method is located on the right here, but for this add-on, I've actually gone and completely ignored that so it's not distracting, and I've actually put it in the left tab here. So you can press T to bring that up, or click the plus button, and then if you go down here to the sprites tab, you now have an option to create a sprite animation. So with our object selected, we're gonna click add sprite animation. So here we can see that the default animation type is scroll, and it's fairly straightforward. We have a speed here, a default amount, so without touching anything, you can just click Apply Settings. It will UV unwrap it for us, and then it will apply a scroll to the plane. So now if you press P to enter the game engine, you'll see that the texture is scrolling. And you can just easily change any value here, click Apply Settings, and then just press Play, and your changes will be applied. 
Now up the top here we have an align to camera option and this is really useful for any sort of sprites or smoke or anything that you don't want the player to be able to look behind. So basically if I select it and then click apply settings not much will change but if I press P then you notice that the plane is always facing towards us. So regardless of what angle we're looking at it, it will always be facing straight on. And this can be really useful again for anything you don't want the player to be able to look behind. Now with the scrolling animation type, only the first material is affected. So you can have other materials on the same mesh that are static. So here I'm going to go into edit mode, then control R, and then scroll up, add myself in a selected section. Here we're gonna go add ourselves a new material and add ourselves another texture. All right, so here's my new texture. Now I'm just gonna to go to the materials, click assign. And now if we go back into object mode and click apply settings, press play, you'll notice all the settings have been applied and that middle material is completely static and not moving while only the first material is. Again, this can be really useful for things like tank treads or conveyor belts where you only want certain parts of the mesh moving. So the next animation type here is called basic and what that does is takes a series of frames and plays them in a sequence to create a animated texture. So to use this I'm just going to quickly reset everything, add myself in a new plane and open up a texture that actually has a series of frames. So here I'm just going to choose shadeless and add, and basically just makes a black background transparent. So here we're going to add ourselves in a texture. Now what I'm going to do is over here again, select it, and then we're going to add a sprite animation. This time we'll choose basic. Now when we select the basic animation type, you'll notice at the top here we get two properties. So basically the X and Y frames represent the dimensions of the actual image. So here we have one, two, three, four, so X is the horizontal, and here we have the vertical, which again is four. Just make sure you enter the maximum X and Y frames, even if the grid isn't complete. So under the image dimensions, we have an instances option, which is basically for any sort of spawned item. So for example, dust, explosion, sparks, that sort of thing, anything that you'll be spawning in multiple copies of, you wanna make sure that you have instances checked. Otherwise, if you don't have this checked, then you'll get the same behavior as with the old system where all the animations will just play at exactly the same time. So if you're spawning them in, make sure that you have instances selected. So here in the animation panel, we have a start, end, speed, loop, and delete. The delete option is only available if you're using instances. And the reason is basically once the animation has finished, it will just end the object and you don't have to worry about timing. However, if you're not using instances, then there isn't usually much point in ending the object because chances are you want it to stay there continuously. So start and end are fairly obvious. End frame is where you want the animation to finish and start frame is where you want the animation to start. So here on our grid, you can see we have a total of 16 frames, four by four. However, if you're using a smaller grid that is incomplete and say only uses up to here, then you might set that down to something like 14. And that way you'll have all these play except for the last two. Now, if you want to play all the different frames, but you're not sure how many there are, you can just set this to a high value and then the add-on will correct it for you. Also, what you can do is you can set this to one and you can set this to the high value. And basically what that will do is just play the animation in reverse. So for this example, I'm just going to play it forwards. So there we go, 138. Then here we're going to set a loop option. So it continuously repeats the animation. Now, if we go to our speed here, you can see we have a whole bunch of options. Down here, we also have a custom option for a custom speed. Just to be clear, the speed does not actually determine how fast your game runs. It just determines how fast the animated texture moves. So if you set this to something like 60, which is really fast, that means that it will be chewing through all your different frames really, really quickly, and you'll barely be able to see them. So here, what you want to do is usually use something like 30 or below, but again, it depends on the animation and how fast you want it to play. So for this example, I'm going to be using 20 FPS. If you'd like to make it even slower than any of these options, you can use custom. So here, zero is equal to 60 FPS, one is 30 FPS and so on. So if you want it to last really long between each frame, then again, you can set it to something like 35. But for now, I'm just gonna choose 20. So once I'm happy with all my settings, I can click apply. It will add that to our plane. Now if we press play, you'll see we have our animation play and continuously loop. 
And just to prove that we can do it backwards as well, set that to 1, set start to 112, click apply, press play, and now your animation will play in reverse. Again, you can also align it to the camera just like before, click apply settings, and there we go. Now it should always be facing towards us. So typically for explosions that you want to spawn in, the default settings that I use will be aligned to camera, spawn with instances so I can spawn it in lots, and then usually one and then the maximum number, and here I'll also use repeat. Now one thing that's very important is delete and loop cannot be on at the same time. And the reason for that is sort of just intuitive, like if you're looping an animation, it can never end, so it can never be deleted. And that's basically what's going to happen here. For example, if I click apply and then press play, this animation is never going to end and it's never going to get deleted because it's looping. So just to make sure it does get deleted, I'm going to turn loop off and then click apply settings. Now if I press play, animation will play and then disappear. Now the next animation type here is called event and what that allows you to do is basically take events from logic and apply them to drive animations. So to use this function we're going to go over here to the game logic and then again here we'll change it to texture view and then here in the right panel we're going to choose UV image editor and again bring up our panel here with the sprite animation. So below our event we have two buttons add and remove so here I'm just going to click add and add myself in a second event. So this event is going to be a result of something happening in the game and then I'm going to play this animation if that event happens and this here is going to be for a separate event but on the same object. So an example of this could be me pressing the letter W an example here could be me pressing the letter S. So here this first one I'm going to call my event 1 and this one here I'm going to call my event Two. Notice on both events here I have the same priority of zero. If both my events here can play at the same time, I can't have the priority set to the same thing. Because if I do, the animated texture won't be able to decide which one it should play, and you might get weird things like flickering and stuff. So here I'm just going to set their priority to 1, and this just means that event 1 will always have priority over event 2. I'm going to set the first one to what we had before, so just playing forwards, and this one here I'm going to set to playing backwards. The speed here is just the delay, so again 1 is 30 fps, 2 is 20, 3 is 15, and so on. So here I'm going to set it to 2, just like we had before. And we'll do the same down here. So for both of these events, I'm going to leave loop on. Then what I'm going to do, make sure we have a logic editor open. And then I'm going to click apply settings. And then here, we'll have some logic bricks that have been added. Now first of all, you'll notice my event 1 is the same as this event you've added here. And my event 2 corresponds to this one down here. So whenever this game sensor gets triggered, that's when your animation here will play. If I make this the W key, and this one here, the second animation, can be the S key. So now if we press play and then press W, you'll notice the forward animation plays. And then if we hold down S, the backwards animation plays. And if we hold down both, so S first and then W, you notice that W overrides the first animation every time. Now one of the things that makes this add-on really powerful is the fact that you can change this sensor to be anything. It could be a message, mouse, near, basically anything you want to change it to. And as long as this is being triggered, then the animation will play. So for example here, down the bottom, I'm going to open up my panel, add myself a new game property, call this game, and then change it to a boolean. Then over here, I'm going to change the always to a property, and I'm just going to check whether game is equal to true. And so if it is true, then this will be constantly playing. So now if I press P, you'll notice nothing happens, but then if we select true, then the explosion plays. Now if you need multiple sensors to trigger an event, say for example the property suspend is equal to false and it's collided with another game object, those are two different sensors. So what you can do instead of trying to plug them in here, you can basically just set up a property like game, then have your collision detection and have your other property. Then with both your new sensors you can add in the respective properties. Then here you can add an AND or whatever other logic gate you want to join them with. And then through here, you can basically just set your property to play that animation. You can just assign game to true, and then that animation will play. 
So again, you can use multiple sensors and use this combination logic to ensure that only one animation plays at the right time. So one example of this is creating a ping pong animation. That just means where it plays forwards and backwards. So to do that, here what I'm going to do is turn off loop and then click apply settings. Then I'm going to quickly get rid of these two. And all that I need to do is have a property like game so instead of game, I'm going to call it forward or FWD. Here we're going to choose forward is equal to true. And then down the bottom one for the second one, we're going to choose property and forward is equal to false. So we have our two events, true and false. Now all we need to do is be able to change them. So here on the right, I'm going to add myself in a property. It's going to be toggle and forward. Down the bottom here, I'm going to add another property and this one is going to be the current frame. So when we do add an event-based animation to an object, you notice we have a current animation field and a current frame field. And both of these are updated accordingly depending on what's playing. So if I set my current frame here to be the maximum, which is 16, then I can connect this up to this one over here. And every time it's equal to 16, it will toggle forward. So when the current frame reaches the end of the first event, it will toggle the forward property. And then when it reaches the end of the second event, it will toggle the forward property and so on and so forth. So now if you press play, you'll notice we have a ping pong style animation playing forwards and backwards. So even just adding three different logic breaks, you can actually change quite a bit in regards to how the event works. So if you'd like to see what these properties are doing in real time, you can select the eye, go to the render settings, and here we'll just choose debug properties. And so now when you press play, you notice we have my event one and two switching in the top. We have the current frame starting from zero and going all the way to 16, and we have forward switching from true to false. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the add-on. As mentioned before, it comes with an instruction manual, basically going through how to install it and how to use all the different parts like I've shown you in this video. And then also it comes with a fully working 2D demo file game. And along with this, you'll get a couple other links to helpful tutorials so you can get started. So that's the end of the video. Definitely let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. If you have any other projects you're using it for, feel free to leave a comment down below as well. That'd be great to see. But apart from that, that's the end of the video. Have an awesome week and I'll see you guys in the next one.